One of the main ones is, I am yours. <laughs> the Lord is yours, and you are His. Just be His right now. Rest in the name. Rest in the great I am. Your I am. Just rest in Him. Just let those cares go. Like that word said just now. Release those cares. Let them go. The burdens. The past. The regrets. The shame and the embarrassment. The fears. The disappointments. Just let those, let everything go. Just let it slide right into his hands. Let him be your I am. So Lord, we're not putting you in a box. (laughs) You're I am. You're I am. How can we put that in a box? Lord, you don't fit. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. Great, great, great I am. Thank you. Thank you. ideas and our preconceived notions and whether you've let them out of the box or whether you've like blown up your box sometimes there just are these little hidden boxes that we think are you know well God can't do that or he won't do that or he isn't that and I've always had this funny picture for years and years of somebody holding their box and God's looking over their shoulder saying what's in the box (laughs) because he's not in the box and you can't put him in a box yeah. He's so he's so big. Yeah. And so mighty and so much that the box is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's silly. It's like we silly people, we have these boxes. Let's just think for a minute. Just take a minute, shut your eyes yeah. and ask God to show you if there's a box. And then just blow it up. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit come and blow that thing up. Hallelujah. I had a box and God really convicted me last week because I wasn't afraid of COVID, but I started to be afraid of the vaccine because of people shedding little stuff out of the vaccine. And so I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? My son says he wants to get the vaccine and he lives with me. I'm going to have to throw him out. I put God in a box, right? And God said, no. He said, you're not in that kingdom. You're in my kingdom. So he blew up one of my boxes just last weekend. Yeah. (laughs) So Lord, some of the boxes that I feel like the Lord wants to address, particularly right now, are areas where you believe that you are stuck and you just can't break through. You can't break out. You can't break forth into the next thing. There's, There's a place where you've been wanting victory for so long. Maybe it's a sin habit. Maybe it's a pattern of thinking. Maybe it's a relationship that you want to see a breakthrough for so long in. Maybe it's a a breakthrough with finances, uh, provision and that kind of stuff. Whatever that area is and health, there's health also. Whatever area it is that you feel like, man, I just feel stuck in this. I, I, I am not getting the victory in this. That's a box that we have put God in all right there. Let's right now, Let's invite the I am to fill that space, to come into that place. You are the I am, the great I am in this place of struggle, in this place, Lord, where I feel stuck. I declare you're the great I am here. You're the great I am in my health. You're the great I am in my finances. You're the great I am in my relationships that are struggling, God, that are broken. You are the great I am in in my 
choices, in my, in my decision to follow you or, or to choose sin at times. You're the great I am even there. And you are my Savior. You free me. You free me from all of these things. Lord, you are greater. You're greater. We declare you're greater. That's why you're the great I am. You're not just the little I am, the occasional I am. You're the great I am, always and forever. You stand, you come through again and again and again. You lead us into victory. You break us out in order to break us in to something new, Lord Jesus. Where there's free, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So you're taking freedom, you're freeing us up from something and freeing us into something new. Lord, thank you that that's what you do. And that's how you work, Lord Jesus. That's how you are working right now. Lord, you're transitioning. Lord, you, you said, your word says that as we behold you, we're transformed from glory to glory. God, so we're beholding the great I am right now in our boxes. We're beholding you. And you're transforming this from the lower glory to a greater glory. Jesus, you are stepping in and taking us higher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, great I am. We celebrate the great I am. We celebrate who you are. We celebrate, God, that you are all we need and even way more. Lord, we'll never get to the bottom of you. You are inexhaustible, God. We'll never fully, fully understand and grasp even your love. Lord, you are magnificent. Lord, so thank you as we surrender. We are freed up. We put our trust in your word, not our trust in the past in the way that these things have hung on. <laughs> we put our trust in the Lord who made me and formed me and shaped me and called me, and gave me a purpose and a destiny. I put my trust in you to break me forth from where I'm at. That's our prayer right now. Lord, our trust is in you. The great I am. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel that. You got a, you got a face mask? Oh, a box. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have a sense from the Lord? Cliff, you got some? As Noel was speaking up front, I opened up just on a notion. I opened up my eSword. And I have a thing that pops up each time I open it at random. So I started reading it, and it was echoing what he was saying up there. Second Peter 1, 3, Everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by his divine power. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we were preaching that one a few weeks ago. I just keep getting that, you know... Like Liz was saying, it's time to take God out of the box. But he also wants us to give us him his testimony of what he has done in our lives. You know, we haven't been given the testimony of, what, of his goodness and what he's done. And so I'm going to start it out. Uh, about four days ago, I all of a sudden my knee was hurting. I mean, I couldn't bend down without it hurting. And I'm like, ah. And I just kept going, ah, this this hurts. I can't hardly move. And I'm finally like, wait a minute. 
who lives inside of me? Yeah. Who I, I need to take authority over this. So I just started laying hands on my knee and just started praying up for, over it. And within a half an hour, all pain was done. I could go up and down stairs. But, you know, we, we have this power. We have this authority in us. And it's time to kick the devil's butt out and say no more. And, I mean, I know this morning when I come into worship, I don't know what was going on. But I ended up, it was inter intercession for this place because there was such an oppression and distractions that were going on. And I'm just like, no, no, we need to give our full attention to the Lord because he's wanting to show up and he's wanting to break through. So whatever you have going on in your life, give it to him and praise him until you have your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Thank you. It says, by the word of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we overcome. Amen. And it's not just that we get to give our testimony once we've overcome something we think. It's all the time. Yeah. Amen. It's all the time. And you know, I, I, there was a guy here a while back that spoke something to me from, you know, I don't remember his name, but he said that I would um, be done working for someone, essentially was his point. That was the, the, the prophetic word God gave him. And uh, that would be soon. And that it would also, something to do with my investments. Yeah. Now, he doesn't know me from anyone. But <laughs> I gave my notice to my boss that I had to quit. Uh, it just wasn't working out. And so he doubled my wages for the next two months, more than that, to stay around for two more months. <laughs> and at the same time, um, he allowed me to increase our, our abilities to uh, maximize and go full-time into investing yeah. and not work for anyone at yeah. all. Yeah. But there's a testimony there's of testimony. God's word yep. going out yep. and coming back to him yep. fulfilled. It's yeah. pretty awesome. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple weeks ago, I pulled all the ligaments between my thumb and my finger and they wanted to cast it and went up to Lorelai and Roy's and she prayed for me and I didn't have to get a cast and I'm getting full function of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really. um. Sounding in me. And uh, Revelation 19.10 the, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And also 1 John 4.4 4, that greater is he in you that in you than he that is in the world. So I just yeah. kept hearing it, hearing it, and so it was confirming with everybody's words. So. Yeah, yeah. That was God. Yeah. Good. Oh, Cheryl. Okay. Oh, okay. Just real quick. I just keep hearing the Lord say, my power, my might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And we have victory in him. And we need to stand in here and not be shaken. We are not a shaken people. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. God sees the desire of our hearts, even if we don't really work on it. <laughs> yes. He knew that the car that my, my mother and I had was still working okay and wasn't giving us any trouble. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, I should probably upgrade. But I didn't do much research or anything about it. I just had this in the back of my mind. And then Thursday at uh, the National Day of Prayer, Noel saw a car. He just thought, hmm, that looks like a Subaru. He went over. It had a for sale sign. He took a picture of it, sent it to me. I went on Friday, talked to the guy, and yesterday signed everything, paid for it, and it's the best car we've ever had, ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Okay. 
This is quick. The mom in me rose up today. My God is so good, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm excited about a testimony here. Um, two weeks ago, my mom just about died. Mm. Her blood pressure shot down to 50 over 20. If any of you all medical know what that means, <laughs> it's like I've never seen anybody come back from that. She is being discharged tomorrow from life care where I work completely. She's break th breaking things up. He broke the stones up so much when she had her procedure that she's supposed to strain and get the particles so they can evaluate it nothing's coming out <laughs> and um, I mean she went from being life flighted to Kootenai and IV antibiotics and not knowing sepsis um, all of that um, and we just kept speaking life kept speaking life to, we found out it was a kidney stone kept speaking life to that um, she had to have a nephrostomy bag put in and I mean it was just a mess for a little while but we just kept you stand and expand was kind of what I was getting when we were oh, talking and just standing speaking life staying true in spite of everything coming one after the other and yeah. that was on a Saturday on Monday my stepdad had to go get an MRI for another um, possible stroke he's had three and dealing with all of that and working and going up to the farm every other every day I had off it's it's been it's been something but you know what I was talking um, to Cheryl, and we were talking about how um, it can be easy in the heart. It can be easy when you stand on the Word of God and stand in faith, grow your faith. These things come, and the testimony is He is there, here is power, there is might, and you can make it through. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Hebrews twelve twenty seven. The words once more show clearly <clears throat> excuse me, that God will change what he has made. These are the things that can be shaken. Then only the things that cannot be shaken will remain. Okay. Okay. I love it. I'm a very big fan of the body ministering to itself rather than just a few doing all of it. That's not the way God designed it. So thank you for ministering to each other. Now let's keep doing that. Praying for each other, testifying to each other, lifting each other up. So it's awesome. Well, Lord, we celebrate you. We give you the glory for all these testimonies, Lord. We praise you, Jesus, the great I am. We praise you because you are faithful, you are good, you are powerful. You come through again and again and again. Even when we don't see it, you're working. Even when we don't feel it, you're working. You never stop working. God, you are always moving, always on the go, always having our back, always working in front of us and behind us and to the left and to the right. You are faithful. You're a good, good father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Can we just praise the Lord, like just applaud him? We will celebrate the great I am. We celebrate the great I am. We celebrate you, God. Praise you, great I am. Praise you, great I am. Praise you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord.
Oh, I love how fired up you are. This is awesome. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Let's, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Let's take communion together. Okay? Let's take communion. Communion, or the Lord's table, whatever you want to call it, but the Lord's table is a place of celebration and victory because we're eating of the I am, right? Right? Yes. Partaking. He's, he is in us. We are in him. We're one. So, I love, I love that God says that uh, he is the Lord and he will not share his glory with another. And then, he st- then Jesus comes along and says, I am in you and you are in me and I am in my Father. And thank you. I'll get that one. And uh, no longer are we another. That's mind-blowing right there. That God shares his glory with you. I will not share my glory with another, but you're not another. Okay? So, we get to eat at the Lord's table because we're not another anymore. We're one. We're one with him. That's amazing. So, so it's all because of the body and the blood of Christ. That's what we're celebrating as we eat, right? By the way, if you need gluten-free, grab the cracker instead of the bread. Okay? The juice is just what it's going to be. <laughs> yes, yes, my son filled the juice cups this week, so... Yep. Yeah, yeah. But as we as we eat and as we drink, this is uh we're continuing to celebrate I am. Celebrate the testimony, celebrate the God of breakout, breakthrough. In fact, that's one of the names of God. Did you know that? David gave this name to God. He said, you are Yahweh who breaks forth. It was the time when the, um, when the, he, when the Lord told him, wait in, the, in these trees. And when you hear the marching over the trees, then you'll know that I've gone ahead and advanced your attack against the enemy. And that's exactly what it is. They heard marching in the trees above them. Imagine that. Okay. And, and then the Lord breaks out on their enemies and they're just, they, the enemy's just slaughtered. And he gave him the name, your Yahweh, who breaks forth. Yeah, like there's Jehovah Jireh and all those, uh, Je- Jehovah uh, Rapha and yeah, Tzikednu and all these other ones. But that is, I'm not sure what the Hebrew is, but it's Jehovah who breaks forth. Okay, yeah, Perazim. Yeah, so the God who breaks forth. So, I love it. I love it. So, he, he's, a, he's like a floodgates that open up, you know, to bring the victory. So, everybody's got some bread? Okay, Jesus, thank you for your body given for us, Lord. You do not withhold yourself even from us, Lord Jesus. You have shared your very self. Thank you for what you've done on our behalf, Lord. Go ahead and eat. Oh, man. Lord, you, you are tasty. Taste and see that you are good. We not only taste that he is good, we see that he is good too. Thank you for the blood. Lord, this blood has opened up an entire new creation, a new reality, a new realm to us. The kingdom of heaven is now our home and our citizenship. Thank you that we belong to the greatest nation in not just the earth, in all creation. It's the kingdom of God. And we pledge allegiance to this kingdom. Thank you. 
for the precious price paid so that we can be sons and daughters. Go ahead and drink. And keep drinking. Keep on. Um, hallelujah. That tasty stuff, huh, Tom? Yeah, yeah. As our continuation of our worship, too, let's um, have the giving baskets go around. And um, I want to thank you for your uh, giving financially to this ministry and also to the many things that we support also from this ministry. We support six, seven missionaries directly in different parts of the world. Some in the Middle East, some in Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, South America, um, India, China. Yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of places that we support um, the gospel going forth in those places. So, yeah. And then besides that, we also care for one another. You know, we're able to bless a family uh, a, two, about three weeks ago or so with helping them pay off a medical bill that they had. And so, you know, that's just the family being the family, right? We watch out for each other. So, yeah. So, Lord, take what we're giving and use it for your purposes, however you want it done. It's yours. And thank you, Jesus. We, through our giving, we declare we trust you to be the provider and our source, and that we're not looking elsewhere for the provision and the source. You are it. Lord, thank you for what you've given, how generous you are to us. In your name, amen. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day. Yes, yes. So thankful for mothers. And I'm saying that to every lady here, whether you are a physical mother or not, Because God has put in you that part of himself that carries the mother's heart. Okay, Scripture scripture paints God in different places carrying that mother's heart. Uh, Even Jesus said to Jerusalem, I I long to be like a mother hen that gathers her chicks under her wings. There's that, that the mother heart did not just come with Eve. It came from the Lord, (laughs) you know. Uh, and deposited into Eve, and then the two become the two, the man and the woman together reflect the whole image of God. That's the way God designed it. So we need you, us guys. So thank you. Thank you for being around. But being a mom is a, it's not so much an identity as a role. Just as much as you're a sister and you're a, uh, you know, a child and you're a, a worker and you're whatever else. But your identity, your primary identity is one as a son or daughter of God, right? That's, and, and then our roles flow out of that, the different roles we have, right? And I want to review a little bit where we've been because the Lord keeps building on this. But we've been talking about identity for a few weeks now. And how important it is to know your identity from the Lord that you cannot afford to think of yourself differently than God does. You cannot afford it, okay? I, I don't know, like, I look back and I, I know God is a redeemer, so I'm not sad about it. But I do see ways where I've um, just spun my wheels for many years, just wasted time believing something that wasn't true of myself. I didn't believe what God said about me. I had a wrong belief about myself. You know? However, God's the redeemer of time. Ephesians 4, we, he, he, he actually engages us to redeem the times. He even says, it says, redeem the times for the days are evil. <laughs> so God's the redeemer of time. So don't worry about any lost years, okay? Just let that burden go off of you, all right? God can accomplish in your life, in one day, everything he destined for you before you were born. So time's not an issue with him. 
So let that burden go, all right? <laughs> so here we are in our identity, learning to live at, in the sonship and daughtership of God. What does it look like to think like a son, to talk like a son? When I say son, I mean daughter too. What does it think? What does it sound like? What does it look like? What are my motives? What, what, how am I thinking? You know, what are my actions? All these questions, and we've been going through this, and we're learning to live from our God-given identity and not from the identities that the enemy has spoken over us, that the past and, you know, that regret can give you identity. Shame can give you identity. Okay? And other people, parents, especially growing up, parents, teachers, people who were authority figures in your life and things that were spoken over you that you came into agreement with that didn't line up with what God says about you. These are all false identities. And they talk. There, there's multiple voices that get in our ears about who we are and who we're not. All this stuff. And, and my, my, my aim for the last few weeks of my life, and we've been talking about it here too, but the la- for, for me very personally, has been to just shut out every voice except for the Lord's. And they, they'll try to pop up. They will. They'll try to pop up. I'm like, no, shut up. It's okay to tell the enemy to shut up, by the way. It's okay. And I've been on this journey of learning to step into my identity uh, from the Lord, and it's quite a process. It's very, and that's why we, I've been saying we're in this time of expansion. You are expanding. I am expanding into my, my sonship, into my identity from the Lord. You're expanding, okay? And, and just the disclaimer, that is not physically, okay? Okay, just making sure, in case you were worried. Uh, yeah. But it's that expansion of your spirit, which actually it's the way we're designed to live is from spirit to soul to body. Okay, and sometimes we'll live from body backwards to soul. <laughs> sometimes we'll live from soul to body and the spirit. But our spirit man is the most powerful part of who we are. Spirit being, you know, and that's why Paul prays in Ephesians 3 that we be strengthened with might in our inner man, our inner being. We be strengthened with might there, that that becomes stronger than the soul or the body. Okay, and that, and, and that we become, learn to become more spirit-led, spirit-filled in that way. So it's really a powerful way to live. Today, uh, I want to talk about thinking saved. Thinking saved. And go to Romans 12. I know we've been hanging out in Romans for a little while, but that's because I'm reading through it and God keeps talking to me. So um, in Romans 12, you guys are probably aware of a pretty well-known verse there in, in verse 2. But we'll start reading in verse 1. And I really, uh, man, I really love this passage of Scripture. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So first of all, he mentions, he says that he describes something of your identity, that you are a living sacrifice, okay? Which I'd rather be living sacrifice because the other option's not so great, all right? A sacrifice was, right? To become a sacrifice, it has to be. And I'm glad that the Lord made us living sacrifices. The problem with being a living sacrifice is, is that we're still living, so we can get off the altar, We're still living, so we can get off the altar. But I want to stay on the altar. That's the altar sacrifice. I want to stay on it. You know? And not kind of move off into my, rather than living in that sacrificial way of Christ, instead living in that, oh, I want Dan's way now. I just stepped off the altar. 
you know. <laughs> so he says, this is your worship, is to live like this. It's not just, you know, we all know worship's not just singing songs and declaring praise. Worship is the way we live. And so you live as a sacrifice, and that's true and proper worship, okay? And then he says this in verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a very powerful statement. How do we change? He says it right here. Renewing of the mind, right? That's how we change. It's not complicated, but it doesn't mean it's easy. (laughs) Okay, but it's renewing of the mind. This word transformed is only used three times in Scripture, and one of us here, one is in 2 Corinthians 3.18, where it says we are transformed from glory to glory as we behold him. Okay, the other one is used when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was metamorphosed. Transfiguration is actually the word. In, in Greek, if you do a transliteration instead of a, a, a translation, transliteration is, is transfigured. So this is saying, basically, be transfigured by renewing your mind. Hmm. Look like Jesus by renewing your mind. Be transfigured. Okay? So... We are renewing our mind. We're changing the way we think. And the glorious part about that, hallelujah, is that it's not up to you to get your mind right. Okay? Because if you try to just do that yourself, you're going to be doing circles. You're just doing circles for years I got to think right. I got to think right about this. I got to think right about that. I got to change the way I think about that. I got to, oh, oh, oh. And the thing is, you have the mind of Christ. Scripture says that. You have the mind of Christ. So I just want my mind to agree with that mind. Okay? So the thoughts of Christ are already in me, are already in you. So I'm I'm choosing to agree with the thoughts of Christ. To, to get rid of the places where my thoughts don't line up with his thoughts. And so there's this invitation from the Lord. Hey, I'm inviting you to think like me. Think like me. Yeah. So we're, renew, we're renewing our minds simply by surrender. Not by trying to force it or make it happen by willpower or anything like that. We we are transformed in the renewing of our mind by surrendering to the thoughts of Christ, okay? And this word is a great source to go to to get my mind to think like his. (laughs) So stay in the word, you know, keep that flow going daily into your thinking. So... We have all this being said about worship, about transformation. And then it says, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Why? Well, because you're thinking just like him. So you know what his will is. You're going to know his good, perfect, and pleasing will because, oh, I have the mind of Christ, and I'm agreeing with it. Okay, so I know God's will. All right? So much of God's will doesn't come down to, Lord, where sh- am I supposed to live here or there? Am I supposed to be, you know, like moving to Africa or what? Am I, am I supposed to be doing this job or that job? So much of God's will doesn't come down to direction. It comes down to character, to who you are, to identity. That's so much more of what God's will is about. And then he ends up blessing whatever the doing is. Okay. All right, I'll leave that one. So, but the, the verse that has really grabbed me is verse three. I kept reading, I kept reading past it and the Lord bring me back to verse three and then I read it again, I read past it and I got into chapter 13 and I know I've got to go back to verse three. 
And so for some reason, I knew the Lord had something here for us, all right? So here we are, Romans 12, verse 3. And what I, before we read it, I want to lay this out right now. In my Bible, including this one and this one, I have two up here, okay? In both of them, there's a little separate, there's a header that separates two and three. Is that, is that true in your Bible? Do you see a little description that separates verse 2 and 3? Wrong place, wrong place for the separator, okay? <laughs> verse 3 is a direct outflow of verse 2. Okay, now listen to this. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think, think, mind, renewing mind, okay? You've seen the connection. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. Okay, if you want a good example of what renewing your mind looks like, there you go. Verse 3. He puts it right there for you. Hey, here's a way to think. Okay, so do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Let's, let's talk about that one. That one's a fun one. Uh, yeah. The, the word there, there's, there's actually in thinking of yourself more highly than you ought, it's the, the actual original language says high-minded. It's, uh, it's hyperphroneo, which it's like hyperphroneo. It's, it's, it's that high thinking is actually a literal translation. It's high thinking. Do not high think of yourself, is what it's saying. Yourself more highly than you ought, yeah. Yeah, think of Christ and higher than you thought. Yeah, yeah, which is where the next part's going, right after that. You're, you're on track, man. So we got this high-mindedness of ourselves, okay? And, and then, it, then it later, right there, it says, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Now, the word judgment isn't even there, okay? I think that's a poor translation. The actual literal language says, think of yourself with sober-mindedness. Be sober-minded, not high-minded, sober-minded, okay? That's what it's saying. It's, it, he's contrasting the two. Don't be high-minded, be sober-minded. But the, here's the deal. It's a sober-minded that's in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you, okay? It's, it, it's a sober-mindedness, and, if you, and that's why today we're talking about thinking saved, Think saved. We're thinking according to faith. Salvation. We're thinking saved. And that's what he's contrasting. Don't think high-minded. Think saved. Okay? So we got these two in, in, uh, in contrast with each other. And you know from your experience as well as I do that, they, that there's a battle that goes on in our minds. There's high-minded and saved-minded. Boom, boom, boom. (laughs) They hit each other. The longer we walk with Christ, and as, like I said, as we surrender, the renewing of the mind happens, as we surrender. So if I surrender to the saved-mindedness, it beats out the high-mindedness, okay? It beats it out. So, this is, there's something else being said here, though, okay? There's no other option than these two in the way you think. You're either going to think high-minded or you're going to think saved-minded. It's like we said before, you... You either are, if you're not living out of sonship, then you're automatically living out of selfishness. 
If you're not living out sonship, you're living in self-centeredness. Because the only place that we are selfless is when we're lined up with who God says we are. That's the only place we're selfless. So it's the same idea here. Same thing. If we think saved-minded, then we're lining up with who we really are in Christ. Okay? We're thinking like Christ. Okay? So the thing is, though, that you can't, you can't think, well, I'm just not going to think. You know, like, there's no low-minded, and I, and I appreciate that. Paul doesn't contrast high-minded and low-minded. He says high-minded and sober-minded or saved-minded. Very different. Because a low-minded is a false humility, which is actually pride in disguise. Okay? It's, it's not, here's what humility is. It's not thinking, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Okay? So that's how we think. That's the saved, saved mindedness there, the sober mindedness. I'm not thinking less of myself, I'm thinking of myself less because my focus is on, oh, okay. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a, such a freeing way to live, by the way. You know, there's books written on the battlefield of the mind and stuff like that. However, the battlefield isn't as difficult as it can be portrayed. So, I'll leave that alone. Okay, so if we're evaluate, how do we know if we're living out of high-mindedness? How do we know if this is operating somewhere in my thinking? Okay, yep, because we're judging others. That's how we know we're living in high-mindedness when we start judging others. Okay? A couple of weeks ago, we talked about choosing to live from either the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is this first one. It's this high-mindedness that judges good, bad, But the tree of life is the second one, living from that saved mindedness. And now I'm not out trying to point fingers. What I'm out is, is looking for life. I'm just looking for where's, where's life because that's where God is. That's where God's moving. So, so the, the problem is that right now, and this is a warning to all of us, including me, Right now, there is a strong, critical spirit over this nation. It's in our society. It's in the nation. It's in the news. It's everywhere. You hear the critical spirit, okay? Or, or a spirit of offense. Both are, are hand in hand, okay? But you hear it. It's, in, it's everywhere. We need to be mindful to not engage it, okay? I've been hearing some a little bit here and there from... Uh, from a, a few in this house, of a critical mindedness. I'm like, ooh, let's be careful. Let's be careful giving into that spirit of criticism, that negative criticism. I'm, I'm for a positive criticism, you know, that calls out the life. That's what I'm after. But not this negative finger pointing, good, evil, high mindedness kind of stuff. Greater than looking down. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. We need to be careful to watch for that in our lives. And if you have been engaging that spirit of criticism, it's just as simple as, oh, sorry, Lord. Forgive me. And then you're back on. Okay? So, watch for that. The, the problem is, and this is part of the enemy's scheme, by the way, 
if he can get that spirit of criticism and offense into the church, then that is division. Yep, breaks down unity. And there's power, there's an exponential power release when unity is in place, which I'm so grateful that we have so much of that here, that the Lord has built that here. But we have to, that we have to be careful with it. We have to guard it. That's why Ephesians 4, 3 says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep it. Keep the unity. And how do we do that? Well, make sure we're, I'm not taking up any spirit of criticism or offense. I'm not engaging that in my thinking. And so I'm, I'm putting it out there for you moms too. And I mean, dads apply, but it's mom's day, so I'm picking on you. Uh, the... To, to watch for critical spirits towards your kids, towards your husband. You know, that offense, whatever it is. Spouses, watch for that toward each other because the enemy's trying to get that into families too, not just church, into families, okay? So watch it between each other. Watch it between you and, ki- and your kids and you and your parents, you and your siblings. Watch for it, okay? Because it's, it's strong in the spirit right now, which... I'm actually thankful for because before it was more hidden, (laughs) but it was still operating. Now it's very easily to be seen. And we can just be like, oh, I see you. Uh -uh. Not in my house, not in my heart. And that's the time we're living in where there's the shaking and the exposure. So it's, it's good even though it's hard to see this junk, but it's good. So we have this other way to live then. That's not the high-mindedness, but the saved-mindedness, the salvation, or the sober-mindedness. And what's, in, what's amazing here, I'm going to try to communicate this because I'm still processing this, and I'm, I, I've been engaging with this for a couple of weeks at least, of just, Lord, help me to see myself this way, okay? In some translation, a lot of translations, it says, according to the measure of faith God has given you. This one, it has the faith God has distributed to each of you. Distributed is not really the word. It's measure, the measure of faith that he's given, okay? So we are instead thinking, okay? Rather, think of yourself. Think of yourself. How do you see yourself? This is an identity peace here, okay? Think of yourself in accordance with the faith God has measured to you. The problem with that that I've struggled with, I I remember memorizing this verse back in junior high. And I remember that this verse to me was like a whip on my back. Because it says, think of yourself with sober judgment. And I'm like, ooh, judge myself. And I memorized it in this version. And so I've been hard on myself in part because I misunderstood this verse. This verse is actually so powerful, so full of hope. So it has a whole nother way to see yourself. Okay. In a, so see yourself with a sober mindedness, with a, a, an awareness of the faith God has measured to you. Now, the word measured is the word metron, which can be translated measure or measurement. It's translated both in the New Testament, okay? And the problem that I had was not only the judgment piece, but also that that I'm supposed to think of myself according to the measure of faith God has given me. Well, uh, well, well, what if my measure is not as much as their measure? And so, so when I compare when I think of myself according to that measure of faith, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, they have more faith than me. And, I, and it automatically lends itself to comparing myself to other people because it's a bad translation. Okay. It needs to be, it needs to be measurement, not measure. Okay. According to the measurement of faith, what it's saying is use faith as the standard of your measurement of yourself. Use faith as the standard. Not pride, 
not ego, not high-mindedness. Use faith as the standard by which you judge yourself. And that faith, by the way, he makes clear, is the faith that God gave. So it didn't come from you, so you can't boast about it. You're welcome. So you have this, this faith working in your life that came from God, and you're judging yourself according to your relationship with God. You're thinking of yourself according to your relationship with God. That's the hopeful part of this verse that I never saw before, except for two weeks ago. I'm like, man, I wish I would have known that in junior high. So it's a manner of seeing yourself according to your relationship with God. In other words, according to how God sees you. That you are the sober-mindedness. There's an awareness of how God sees you according to the faith as the standard of measurement. Okay? It's not by looking at how well you're doing compared to others or how bad you're doing compared to others or how you think, like, I'm at this age and I should have accomplished this by now. I wanted to have these things done. I wanted to be in a certain place by now. So now you're comparing yourself to yourself. If you're not comparing yourself to others, you're comparing yourself to self, and all that is high-mindedness. Okay? That is exactly the trick that the serpent put on Adam and Eve. If you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. It is a temptation into pride and ego, into comparing myself, in, in Adam and Eve's case, to God. Yes, like God is not with God. It's a separation. That is, that is true. Yeah. So, so we have this, this dynamic going on where the enemy wants us and, and the world system operates this way, operates from high-mindedness. The whole thing. Right? Me, myself, and I. So if I'm not comparing myself to others, I'm comparing myself to myself, which is problematic. And, and so God gives us a marvelous other option. Compare instead. Com, com, uh, think of yourself according to what I say about you. Here's another option. He gave us a way out from being caught in this cycle of comparing ourselves to others and, and to ourselves. It's time to stop beating ourselves up. If we were to look at our souls, I know for me, if I was to look at my soul, I'd see a lot of scars there that were self-inflicted. Okay? It's time to stop beating ourselves up so much and instead evaluate ourselves. Like this verse is saying, evaluate yourself according to the faith, to faith as the standard of your measurement, according to what God says about you. The Lord wants to release a freedom to you through these verses, okay? Remember, the, Jesus says that the word of God cleans us. He said that to the disciples, that you, not all of you are clean, but because he's referring to Judas, but, he, but he, he said, but I have cleaned you by the word. And then there's another verse that talks about the washing of the word. God is doing that for you right now. There's a washing and a cleaning going on to make sure you see yourself like he does, okay? To get off the, high, the high-mindedness and come into the saved-mindedness, to think saved, think according to faith, Think according to what God says about you. And that, going back to Romans 12 too, is primarily what it looks like to renew your mind and thus be transformed. Transfigured. You will not look like the same you you look today because you're transfigured. Your, your true worth is not 
found in that high-mindedness pride. Your true worth is found in the sober-mindedness of salvation, of what God says about you. That's where your true worth is found. (laughs) So I want to make this clear to everybody here. Your significance does not come from what you do or from your perceived impact on this planet. Your significance and your value simply comes from who you are in him. That's it. Who you are in him. So if you're looking around your life and thinking like, man, I I don't feel like I've impacted many people. I, I like the, the things I do don't have as much significance. You know, I, I wish I was a president or an astronaut or, a firefighter or something like that. The problem is that even those guys struggle with their own significance. (laughs) Struggle with their value. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters who you're believing you are. Okay? So some of us, we feel like, man, I've got to do ministry up front. I got to sing. So, so I can feel good about myself. I, 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 need to, I need to give a prophetic word so I can, I can feel like I did something. And I want to just get that burden off of you, that you are significant just by you being you. Okay? Just being, you're, you're automatically a conduit of the love of God. Rivers of living water flow from within you. Just from you being who you are. Oh, just let the burdens off, okay? I'm not saying I don't want you to prophesy or I don't want you to sing, unless your voice isn't that great. But, uh, <laughs> thanks for that and joyful noise. Uh, so, but, but what I am saying is, make sure that your significance is flowing out of who the Lord says you are, rather than what you've been doing. Okay, or where you're evaluating your at compared to others or compared to where you wanted to be at. All that's a trap. Okay, so I'm encouraging you, think saved. Think as a son or a daughter of God. Think that way because it's already there, all right? It's already there. It's already in you. Okay, so goodbye high-mindedness, hello saved-mindedness, hello sonship and daughtership. This is who I am. Okay, now I will let you know this. And speaking from experience, this will be challenged. You will be challenged in this. If you can now, from verse 3, have this filter that says, okay, is that thought high-minded or is that saved-minded? Which one is it? If I can have that filter going in my mind to what 2 Corinthians 10 say, bring thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. A high-minded thought, I'm going to say, Psh, that's not who I am. You're my prisoner now. Come on, I'm bringing you to Jesus. And then I switch over to, so, to save mindedness It's good to talk to yourself. Okay? It's good to talk to yourself. Don't tease somebody if they're talking to themselves, all right? Talk to yourself. Tell your soul who you are. I am saved. I am whole. I am a son. I am a daughter. That other thought is not who I am. What that person said is not who I am. What my parents said, what my daughter said, what my, you know, 
co-worker said, that's not who I am. Okay, if somebody insults you, is that coming out of high-mindedness or sober-mindedness? Oh, so understand where some of these, these negative statements of your identity are coming from. It's coming from their pride, their ego. And I've been believing that this for how long, you know? So let's get this filter up. High-minded or saved-minded? High-minded, saved-minded. Are we good? Okay. So Jesus, lead us forward in this understanding. Expand us, Lord, right now. Expand. You're, you're already doing it. Expand us into the fullness of your freedom. Your freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And the Spirit of the Lord is in me. The Spirit of the Lord is in you. The Spirit of the Lord is in this house. It's in your church all over the world. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And there is freedom in me, inside of me. Talk to yourself. Come on. Tell yourself, there's freedom inside of me. Come on. There's freedom inside of me because that's where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's freedom inside of me. I think like a son. I think like a daughter. I get rid of high-mindedness, that pride and that ego. I get rid of that. And instead, I embrace a saved-mindedness. I, I choose this day, Lord, and I know, I know it's not going to be smooth sailing, but I choose this day to think saved-minded, to think like you think, to think what you think about me. And thus, my mind changes and I am transfigured. I am not the same person because I have agreed with what you said about me. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. That we don't, we don't have to fight long and hard about this. Instead, we just follow your spirit and you lead us through it. Lord, you lead us through it. In, in the rhythms of grace, that's what it is. We're just walking in the rhythms of grace and you lead us through it and you change the way we think. You teach us at each step along the way. I don't have to have an elaborate sermon prepared to tell myself. I just follow you step by step just in the ease of being a son and a daughter and having a, a, a dad, a father God who is intimate with me, who is close and right here. Thank you, Lord. I no longer identify myself or others from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but instead from the tree of life because you are the way, the truth, and the life. So I agree with what you say about me. Thank you for freeing me up. If you're here today or you're joining us online and you have yet to give your life to Jesus Christ, I, we are telling you and you have heard it today, there is a new option available for you to step into a deeper freedom than you've ever known where you can get rid of all the burdens and the comparisons and all the junk that the, that the world tries to put on you. The Lord offers you this freedom. If that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus today, then just do it right now. Tell him so. Lord, I give my life to you. I surrender to you. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross and you rose from the grave three days later. Forgive me for my own, going my own ways all this time, choosing my own, my own junk and instead, Lord, I now choose you. I choose you. Teach me to think how you think about me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in, the, in your spirit. And I choose to follow your plan and your calling and your destiny for my life from this day forward. If you pray that today, please reach out. Let us know. Message us. Call us. Whatever. Let us know because we want to celebrate with you. We want to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. But Lord, we thank you for how amazing you are, how you have cleaned us with your word today, 
how we are leaving from this house more free than what we came in. Lord Jesus, that there is uh, that there is a new option for us and we see it clearly. There's this new filter in place and we see it clearly. So Holy Spirit, show us the places where we're high-minded so that we can change to save-minded. We give you free reign to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, isn't it good to be saved? Isn't it good to be in the kingdom? Man. All right. We have a gift for every lady in the house. So we wanted to bless all of you all for showing and caring the heart of God. So if you're a lady, can you please stand up? Stand up, ladies. Okay, if you're not a lady, if you're not a lady, let's pray for the ladies, okay, but we're, uh, gifts are coming around, so make sure that you get these. These are a bundle of daffodils, and what you do, ladies, make sure you hear the instructions for the flowers. I was told to pass them on, okay, I'm not a flower guy, but... But you got you to gotta snip off a little bit of the stem, just like half an inch or a quarter inch of the stem. Snip that off and put it in water, and those will bloom. And they'll, they'll bloom for a while, too. So, okay? So, all right. Did every lady get some flowers? Any ladies that don't have flowers yet? Okay, all right, everybody who's not a lady, let's pray for the ladies. So Jesus, we bless our ladies, we bless our wives, we bless our moms. God, we thank you for them, we thank you for the way that they exhibit your heart, Lord Jesus, that in, in many ways they have shown us a sober-mindedness in the way they've lived selflessly in raising their kids, in loving their husbands, in helping, Lord. And, and for some of us, Lord, this is a painful Mother's Day. Be, maybe we had a mom who was not that great of a mom. <laughs> maybe also we lost our mom in the last year. Lord, thank you that even in the spirit right now, we honor them. And, and Lord, we thank you for them. Even, in way, even when they didn't reflect your heart, Lord, we thank you for them anyway. Rather than carrying a critical spirit or a spirit of offense, Lord, we see them through the image of God. Thank you for them. Lord, we bless the rest of this day for these ladies that they would feel loved, encouraged, supported, empowered by you, Lord Jesus, that they also would have a special gift from you of an expansion into daughtership, Lord, into their identity. That happens today, Lord. Thank you. We release that right now in the spirit to each one. In your name, amen. Let's bless our moms. Let's love them, huh? Thank you, ladies. Love you, love you, love you. All right. There's goodies out there. Help yourself. Stick around if you want. No need to rush out. If you need prayer for anything, please come up and get prayer. We'd be glad to pray for you. But blessings on you. And we'll see you maybe Wednesday night and Thursday night for Tim Caton. <laughs>